Hey guys, Franco from Your Guitar Academy. I hope you're doing well. I hope the practice is going well. I want to show you something today that is super helpful to just make your patterns sound better and more professional and just add some texture to them. And it's when we use muted strums. So if you're into rock music and, and rock patterns, that's super helpful. Let me show you how that works. So a muted strum is basically when my hand is flat, my left hand is flat on the strings, but I'm not pressing at all. And the strings, they sound like this. Right, if you overpress, you're gonna have something that sounds more like. So we don't want that. You want the left hand to be extremely relaxed. Now, the reason why this is interesting is because as teachers, we always say to our students, keep the right hand moving, keep the right hand moving on patterns. Like that's extremely important. We're not saying that just because we're mean, it's actually useful. But when your hand is moving and you're not using all the movements, it feels a bit like, it, like it still sounds like you're a beginner sometimes. I'm sure if you play, I don't know, uh, F, major here i'm playing an f power chord for example on fret number one to a b flat power chord which is the same position but a string below if you play that just like you know that transition feels a bit empty it feels like something's missing but if you add some of these chunk of chunkers there where you're just using the strings and strumming it sounds a bit more consistent right and it's something you've heard before for example if you listen to smell like in spirit it's literally the same two chords sounds like this um. Right, so I'm doing exactly the same thing, except the pattern is slightly different. But I'm using these muted strums to help me jump, to help me transition between these two chords without sounding like... Right, that's the difference between this and... And I'm really going for it. It's not just a trick, you know, it's a technique that I actually use to fill the gaps between the strums. Um, if I play the whole riff, it goes like this, there's a lot of them. So you may have noticed that I'm doing the same thing between the B flat here, uh, B flat power chord, and the A flat power chord there. So that works as well as on the same hand position. It works when you're transitioning hand position, when you're going. You can still use the same thing. Right, that works the same way. So let's put the whole thing together. So it's, it's just a really cool thing to use. It just sounds so much thicker straight away. It sounds like you're confident with your right hand, your pattern's better, you're, you're more solid rhythmically. Something you may have heard on Song 2 as well by Blur. So the song goes like this. Um, If I remove these muted strums, it would sound a bit empty. But as soon as you've got them, with a bit of overdrive... So I'm not using them again just to... just because I don't have a choice. I do have a choice. Like, you heard the first version and the second one, it just sounds better with the, the second option. It just sounds like you know where you are and your patterns are just more solid. Also, you're just using your right hand more because if you're doing things well, your right hand is always moving, but now you're actually using this creatively, which is way more interesting. Right, so let me try and show you how that works and let's try to build an example together just to understand the backbones of that technique and you can use it next time on the songs that you come across. So let's say we've got three chords. Let's say A5, so I'm playing a, an A power chord on fret number five here. And then the next chord we'll have is D5. It's the same hand position, just down a string. And I'm gonna play E5, so same hand position, but this time up two frets. There you go, so you can see my fingers. So I'm playing this position there. That's the D5, and that's the A5. I tend to use my pinky when I'm playing power chords, you don't have to. Now, let's say I'm playing these chords on beats one, two, three, four. I'm playing each chord um, twice per bar. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and back to D, three, four. One more time, one, two, three, four, one, Two, three, four. Okay, that sounds okay, like it's all right. The chords sound good together, but let's try to add some of these muted strums. So now if I start adding them, it's gonna sound more like. So what I'm doing here is right before I hit the next chords of my transition, no matter where I'm transitioning to, I'm doing, right? So. 
So I'm doing a down, up, muted, and the next down stroke, the third one, will be the chord. So if I slow down between the first two chords, and then it would be the same thing repeated again. So starting from D, and back, and back. It's a great exercise to teach your hand how to relax on the strings because that's the hardest thing is to be able to fret the chord, relax the hand to get the muted strums there and press back onto the next chord. So that means you've got to think ahead, you've got to think of where the next chord is going to be. So that way, you know, the transitions are, are still there. But remember, during the muted strums, when you're doing, you can move your hand because no matter where you do that, it sounds pretty much the same. And if the pitch of those harmonics we're hearing is slightly different, well, it's more dynamics, it's fine. We don't want to sound like, you know, MIDI or a robot or whatever. It's an actual instrument. It's fine if it doesn't sound the same every time. So don't hesitate to move your hand and to start your transition as you're doing these muted strums. That's the whole point of it, is to simplify your transitions and to make them sound better. Let's do the same thing one more time. I'm going to start digging harder and playing a little bit faster, just so you know what we want to sound like. Right, so these muted strums, they're extremely useful. If you're into grunge and into Nirvana and all of that, it's something we dove into in the Nirvana course, so I invite you to check it out because, you know, we spend some time on those. Um, and yeah, keep on working on those because you'll see them on a lot of different genres as well, not just grunge. I'll see you on the next video. Take care, bye-bye.